Okay, so what we're going to uh, essentially need is an if statement or a shorthand if statement for each uh, value and we want to check if the length of it doesn't equal 2 and if the length doesn't equal 2 we want to append a, a number in front. For example, um, if we were to say if the length of days doesn't equal 2, which it doesn't, we want to add a 0 in front of here so it will show 0 1 days. Uh, it just adds a bit more structure but obviously this at this point it's optional. But let's go ahead and do this anyway. So what I want to do is I want to redefine each variable. So I'm going to say days equals, and then in here is going to be my condition. So I'm going to say string days. We're converting days, which remember at the moment is an integer, to a string. And then we're using dot length to check the length of it. So if this doesn't equal 2, uh, I want to go ahead with a question mark the uh, first option. So if this, e if this statement evaluates to true, I want to go ahead and say days is equal to 0 plus days. Else, using a colon, I just want days to equal days, so we're just reassigning the same value. So you might may have seen something like this if you've studied uh, other languages, other programming languages. It's just a way to say days, if days, um, if the length of this or if this condition uh, evaluates to true, then this value here will be assigned to days, otherwise this value here will be assigned to days. So we can do this for each one. So we've got days, hours, equals, and the same thing, string hours dot length doesn't equal two. If it doesn't equal two, we append a, um, a zero onto the front of hours. Otherwise, hours is just set back to hours. And the same with minutes, we say mins equals convert temporarily mins to a string. Check the length doesn't equal two. If the length doesn't equal two, we have a zero appended on two mins. Otherwise, we have just have mins. And the same for seconds, we convert seconds to a string. We check the length sorry check the length against minus two and if it is we just go ahead and pop a zero in front of seconds otherwise it just stays a seconds so uh, quite straightforward here uh, let's go ahead and just test this when I refresh you can now see that we've got um, oh okay so let's just take a look at what we've done Oh, okay. Sorry, the the countdown here has uh, obviously has it reached? No, it hasn't. Uh, let's just have a look then. Um, oh, right. Okay, so I've called this minutes and this seconds, and let's just realign these up. So the wrong variable names, obviously there. Uh, we can just go ahead and correct this. So minutes and seconds and the same with this minutes and seconds there we go and the last one seconds right okay so um, we've obviously got days hours minutes and seconds being reassigned depending on their length and we're adding a trailing uh, or a leading zero if not so now you can see that we've got one day uh, which is zero one now 21 hours which is two characters so we haven't appended on a zero uh, to the front or prepended a zero we've got two minutes which does only have one character so we've prepended on a zero here and then the seconds um, work in exactly the same way as when they get down to like for example the number nine uh, which we'll see in just a moment uh, we then can see that um, it will add to zero on uh, so that's all that this does. Obviously, it's optional depending on how you want to display it. But if you want to sort of keep the same size um, elements, this is really useful because you're keeping the same size depending on how these change. If, for example, 22 seconds comes down to 9 seconds in a moment, uh, this will shift everything inward if you didn't have the prepended zeros. So it just makes it look a lot cleaner as well and it maintains the same. Uh, so you can see there it's just changed and it hasn't shifted everything inwards. Okay, so now what we want to focus on is checking um, whether this date is a number or not because remember we're converting a string based date here uh, to a timestamp. So what we want to do is if, if it's not a number, we don't want to display anything. We want to just 
you know not do anything uh, we're not going to give an error um, I mean we could give an error but we're just gonna want to not do anything so for example at the moment if I go to ext.js and just change this to um, I'll just type Alex in capitals in the middle of this when I refresh you can see that we've got NAN 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 and NAM for not a number uh, because this has had a problem converting with Alex into a timestamp so what we want to do is before we display everything here we want to say if uh, not is NAN so if this if um, something inside of this bracket is not a number which is event date uh, then we uh, want to display this so if it's not not a number which means if it is a number um, we could even uh, go as far as pulling this up to um, up to here I guess um, yeah I suppose we could actually uh, that would probably be the correct way to do this uh, let's just go ahead and undo all of that so I'm gonna say a just up here I'm gonna say if not is not a number event or settings event oh in actual fact no we need to convert the value beforehand uh, to check whether it's a number so what we'll do is we'll just keep it down here we use slightly more processing power before we actually work out if it's not a number 